This is the geospatial technology section at the Idaho Department of Water Resources. We process satellite images and to make digital maps. Wait in the water. Wait in the water, children, wait. The maps we're making today are not your grandpa's maps. We're processing satellite images to see how much water is used on individual fields. Here in Idaho, Water is truly the lifeblood of our economy. We have about 3.3 million irrigated acres. Most of the western United States is a desert area so that our precipitation, even over the entire year, is generally insufficient. Water rights have been a major issue in Idaho since the 1800s when, when the first irrigators began to divert from the various rivers. So we have what we call the prior appropriation doctrine First in time is first in right. The system that we're using now in Idaho is called metric. The satellite is a lot like a color camera, except that instead of mixing the colors together, it actually takes separate pictures over six different parts of the solar spectrum. This is the raw Landsat data. The bright red areas show actively growing vegetation. And then this data is processed with the metric models and is converted into evapotranspiration or water consumption. And here we, we can start to see the individual fields. And we can even zoom in a little further than that. And here we can actually see the individual pixels. These are 30 by 30 meters in size. Only metric can tell us how much water is actually being used on a field by field basis. And it is on a field-by-field -field basis that water rights are administered. One of the most important applications in my mind of the satellite-based evapotranspiration is to help sustain some of the global uh, water supply and food production. And our hope is that long-term we should see millions, tens of millions of people uh, with a better food supply. Massachusetts Health Connector is a public-private partnership that has kicked off two rather um, significant programs. Hello, I'm Dr. Jordan. How are you doing? Nice to meet you as well. I'm going to start off by taking a look. Uh, one for people who buy on their own, small businesses or individuals. So we're kind of certifying that those plans are, um, are good, solid plans that um, people can purchase and that the plans will cover them when they truly need it and one for folks who are low income, don't have access to other subsidies and need uh, government help. I had health insurance uh, through my employers. I started getting sick and I uh, missed a lot of work and eventually lost my job because I was hospitalized for so long. Um, and when I lost my job, I lost my health insurance. What we had before was more of an episodic care where patients would come in, establish a relationship, they would lose coverage or lose their position at work and then not be able to come back or not be able to afford their medications. A lot of these folks were going uninsured. I have uh, chronic uh, autoimmune disease called Wegener's granulomatosis. With the Universal Health Care Plan in Massachusetts, they now have more broadened access to care and they're now better able to access preventative services. The key thing is that they were not hooked into primary care and so they couldn't um, have the peace of mind of having regular health insurance coverage and being able to take um, issues before they become really big issues. We um, cover about 180,000 Bay Staters who really have no other way to get health insurance and are low income. Essentially the same as someone who had, you know, private insurance, um, but the premium is is very inexpensive. Uh, we've gotten all but about two and a half percent of Massachusetts residents insured. It's made such a huge difference in my life um, and in the lives of a lot of people. I'm able to practice as a doctor. I'm really able to focus on a patient, focus on their disease, and improve their clinical outcomes in the end. It's essentially saved my life. We are trying to make government available and accessible, and the best way to do it, we think, is to have data readily available for the citizens of the District of Columbia. This is a citywide data warehouse program. This is where we collect all the data in the city, bring it to one centralized location. One of the real unique things about the citywide data warehouse is that it is, in fact, accessible to the public. 
we get that raw data out to the public and the mayor's office and then we customize that data and put it out into simple charts and graphs so uh, everybody can understand it. Let me show you an example of an application that we create. It's actually a way for developers who are thinking about investing. I can simply tap on this chart here. I can get a neighborhood profile which shows me pictures of what the, what the place might look like. It shows me a map perhaps. Now I want to see what retail sites are available. It zooms in. I can say I'm interested in 600 F Street. That property looks interesting. Give me a little bit more information. And right away I have description of it. I have which ward it's in, available square feet, availability. Oh, I see it's available immediately. What's a picture look like? Now I can actually see already this might be a place I want to invest in. So this is really just one example of an application we've been able to build with our data feeds. Making the data directly available as data, suddenly citizens are able to do more things with it. They can actually build applications with it. The next group of people, which was us, kind of the innovator, developer, you know, entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. can say, okay, let's do our part and kind of pull it together. The government focuses its efforts on just putting the data out there and allows people like us to build services on top of it. It makes the data a lot more meaningful to citizens. They can actually use something like I Live At. You might be interested to know what supermarkets are near you, or what the crime is like in your area, or what the demographics are like in your area. Well, with I Live At, you can actually get all of that information directly available simply by typing in your address. Essentially a, a quick report of everything going on in your area. Rather than having to go and look at what the restaurants are in the area, where's the closest grocery store, what's the metro, what's the public transportation like, it just tells you all that all in one click. If you look at inventors, academics, people in government, you find a lot of the greatest achievements aren't driven by money. It's, you, people want to solve problems. The central idea for new leaders is that a principal or school leader is a critical lever to drive student achievement outcomes for children. The principal is important because they're the ones who create the environment for all of the things that we know can be possible in schools that are really working for children. How do you recruit? select, train, and provide ongoing support to school leaders in order to ensure success. A candidate for New Leaders for New Schools begins with the intensive selection process. I felt that that was the most rigorous application I had ever filled out because it made me think about the commitment that I was going to make by applying to New Leader. We're looking for people who have, first and foremost, belief that all children can achieve at high levels. For sure, the ability to get other people to work together effectively at a shared vision. The one thing that I would say had to be there was absolute courage. It starts with four weeks of courses where they come together from the city where they're going to be training with all of our other new leaders from across the country. It is a phenomenal uh, intensive training program. Uh, the, the single thing that I got the most from in foundations was the fact that I'm not alone, that there is a mass of school leaders out there who have the same vision as I do, that see schools as a place of uh, civil, civil rights action, a place of social change. Chicago, but I have made long life relationships and uh, it's exciting to be around so much wealth of knowledge and experiences that you, that you know that when you need them, you could go and tap on them. From there, they go into what really then puts all of that learning into practice. They go back into what we call their residency experience. So in the city in which they're training, if they're a resident selected for the Chicago Public Schools, they'll go spend the whole rest of the year in an existing urban public school, working with a host principal there and they'll have the opportunity to actually lead a team of teachers. When I get back to Chicago to my residency, I'm charged, I'm going to learn uh, and to apply everything that I have learned at Foundations. Now New Leaders has close to 700 leaders in this country leading um, close to 300 schools and our New Leaders definitely feel like they are a part of a movement to drive education reform for each and every child and its scale across the country. Dr. Locke, how did this collaboration get started with Educate and Grow and uh, Kingsport? As we're here today, celebrate the grand opening of the high res. We realized here in the region that we had a problem. We were facing serious problems with our manufacturing sector. Kingsport was a manufacturing town, and we had lost thousands of jobs, and, and the people really didn't know where to turn. I called 80 business leaders together 
to participate in an economic planning summit? As uh, manufacturers, uh, we've got to have a workforce that is uh, modern, is trained, is efficient, is aggressive. And we really want to provide a means for local folks to get the, the technical training and knowledge that they need to do these uh, very high-skilled, challenging, very rewarding jobs. Determined that the best way to attack the economic development problem and the jobs problem was to focus on education. We took the proposal to the Kingsport City Board of Mayor and Aldermen, and they appropriated $50,000 to provide scholarships here. Any student that graduates from high school can get a scholarship. The, the city put up the money. In return for that, the college agreed to put a, a, a branch in downtown Kingsport. What better way to do it than to put your higher education center there? You, and, and what happens with it are all the spinoffs, the restaurants, uh, the housing that occurs. And we knew that by bringing more people into the downtown sector, you create the environment under which small businesses and others can survive economically. The academic village really helped in terms of even in its talking stages because uh, that helped people have confidence that they can invest in downtown. A citizen who lives here in Kingsport and start and complete an associate degree program at Northeast State and then without leaving the community and began their studies for a baccalaureate degree program, a master's or doctoral degree program in selected areas. <laughs> Dreams do come true, don't they? My family, you are my family. Wraparound Milwaukee is a unique system of care that was created about 15 years ago to better serve children in this community with serious emotional and mental health needs. We're heading over to the uh, Greenlee family right now, a family that uh, came to us on some really kind of difficult situations. I lost my second oldest son in 2005. He got accidentally shot at the age of 15. Well, Taurus was involved in the accidental shooting of his older brother, which left uh, all the family members, all the kids in the house, um, spread out in different placements. He lived for four days. And it kind of went, I kind of lost it. Yvonne was homeless at the time, without a job, without any of her kids in her custody. And that's when Wraparound came in to, into my life. A key role in Wraparound Milwaukee is our care coordinators. A care coordinator is a person that works with a family team. But we're advocates for the family and we work for the family. So we want to make sure that we're identifying the supports within the community that can help make that family be self-sustaining. Kurt brought me in as a uh, crisis stabilizer for Taurus, and I've just been working with him, trying to make sure that he stays in a positive, positive environment. It's more about, do you care about kids and families, and do you hold true the philosophy and values of wraparound, those key principles of being family-centered, strength-based. It really can change lives. So, yes, it's gonna be, it's gonna be all right, yes. child who played with the moon and stars, waves a snatch of hay in a calm.